Um, welcome to the October 14th special board meeting of the Hart Board of Directors. Um, please, at this time, as I call you to order, look at the screens of your devices where an image of the flag is displayed and join me in a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. Um, and I will tell you that uh, Commissioner Miller submitted a memorandum uh, previous to this meeting advising us that due to a scheduling conflict, he was unable to attend today's meeting, and um, that memorandum will be filed with the meeting record. So with that, would staff please take attendance? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. This is Danielle from Hart. Please say here after your name is called. Director Castor. Director Castor. Director Hardin. We saw her say how uh, here, <laughs> but we couldn't hear her say here. <laughs> Director Hardin. Director Hudson. Here. Thank you. Uh, Director Kemp. Here. Director Knight. Director McLean. Director Mechanic. Director Mechanic. Here. Thank you. Director Overman. Here. Director Schistler. Here. Chair Smith. Here. Director Vieira. Here. Director Williams. Here. Thank you. You do have a quorum, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair, you're muted still. Thank you. That won't be the first time. Um, and thanks for the roll call. Uh, at this point, Hart General Counsel Julia Mandel will read into the record the rules for participation in this virtual meeting. Good afternoon, Julia. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for your participation in this virtual meeting. The change of meeting location from in person at the Hart Administrative Office to virtual meeting is pursuant to Executive Order Number 20-179, extending Executive Order. 20-69 by Governor of the State of Florida on July 29, 2020 and Section 120.54 Florida Statutes. Due to social distancing, the boardroom at the eboard Administrative Office is only accessible for personnel facilitating the meeting. Please keep your devices and phones muted when not speaking. Muting the sound and microphone helps to avoid feedback. Please do not enable the video or the camera on your device and discontinue all personal conversations the duration of the meeting. Please follow along with a copy of the meeting agenda material sent via email. All presentations will be shared on the screen when presented. Roll call will be taken for attendance and voting by heart staff. Quorum, quorum and voting results will be announced. There will be an opportunity for members of the public who have pre-registered with heart staff to provide comments. Uh, I will read into the record the public comment participation rules, although I understand there are, is no request for public uh, participation in this meeting. During the meeting, please wait until the chair asks for comments or questions from committee board members for each agenda item as the meeting progresses through the agenda. If you want to provide a comment or ask a question, please signal that you want to speak by activating the hand button in the white circle next to your name on your screen. The hand will turn blue when activated. That will the hands raised in order for the chair to acknowledge and the participant may unmute their device and speak. Please speak your name before comment. Presenters, please note that all presentations will be controlled by heart staff. Ensure that you state your name, title, and organization for the record. Please, ne please say next slide when needed, and staff will progress through the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And I understand Mayor Castor needs to test her audio. Can you, can you hear my audio now? 
Sarah, yep. just fine. Yes, thank you. All right, we had to go out and come back in. My apologies. And, and uh, please mark her present. Um, um, Madam Chairman, this is Dave Mechanic. I, uh, yeah. I had trouble with my audio, too. I had to call in on the phone line. Thank you. Sounds like everybody's good now. All right, we have, um, as, uh, as noted, we have no public comment um, signed up to speak today. So that is one less thing on the agenda and that takes us straight to our discussion items. We have two major discussion items to cover today. And the first one is the interim CEO appointment. But first I would like to thank uh, the Heart Leadership Team for keeping this agency running and coordinating their management efforts during the last couple of weeks while we were doing without an ICEO. And this team pulled together, pitched in, and did a great job of keeping Heart firing on all cylinders. And, and so I think they deserve a little recognition as we get started today, and that is um, Cindy Stiglick, Ruthie Reyes Burkhardt, Lena Pettit, Crystal Hundley, Scott Drainville, and Jacqueline Haldow. And thank you all very much for the for the teamwork in in getting us through a, a bit of a little trying time and working together. At at this point, Julia Mandel, Hart Board General Counsel, will give us a little background and introduction to our ICEO appointment. Ms. Mandel, you're recognized. Uh, yes. As you are all aware, the previous ICEO, Ms. Carolyn House Stewart, has resigned as the Heart Board ICEO uh, as of September 28, 2020. That has created a vacancy in your ICEO uh, position as you move forward into the, the CEO review process. As we stand right now, Cindy Siglage, interim CFO, has received a delegation of temporary signature authority by memorandum from Heart Board Chair Smith and General Counsel, which assignment was dated September 29, 2020. While we are in the process of recruiting a permanent CEO position, it is important that we have an interim CEO in order for this transition period in order to conduct the necessary business as we move forward. So I would actually I would I would turn this back over to Chair Smith as well as the board to discuss what you would like to do in order to um, appoint an interim CEO during this transition period. And I'm available for any questions as it relates to the policies or other board matters. Thank you. Thank you. And before I open the floor for board discussion and nominations for our ICEO. I'd like to give just a little background. In the past, we have appointed the CFO to serve as interim CEO, and I did discuss that idea with Ms. Cindy Stiglick, our CFO, and she told me she feels it would be best for the agency for her to remain as CFO. I agreed. It is um, also, as we discussed and, and discussed with uh, general counsel, it's not a good idea to have the CFO be the same person as the ICEO in order to maintain the standard checks and balances between financing and executive uh, branch. So as we look at our options, I think there would be good reasons to appoint someone that has not applied for the permanent CEO job. And I also ran this by our CEO recruiter, Charlene Stevens, who uh, agrees with this. Um, and and we'll, I just want to put out there that it's important at this stage in our search that all the applicants are assured that they are all starting from the same starting line. So we don't want to give the impression or, or the perception that we are giving uh, any anyone a head start uh, at this point in the candidate search uh, process. So having said that, I will just point out that Ms. Ruthie Reyes Burkhart fills that bill. She has 19 years experience with Hart and she is willing to step up and maintain her current duties 
while acting as ICEO during this interim period. Um, so before I open the floor for nominations, I would just ask if there are any other general comments or questions by the board members. And you'll remember that there's a bit of delay in raising your hand and, and me seeing any comments, but um, at, this, at this point I see none. So um, I will open the floor for uh, nominations for ICEO. I'll nominate uh, Ms. Ruthie Reyes Burkhart. I think she's been a, a great leader at heart um, she manages, I think, the greatest uh, part of the operations already, um, and I appreciate that she's willing to step up to the plate here. I think she is a uh, a perfect person to fill in. I'll second that. Uh, this is the uh, second. Okay, and uh, I see a hand by Mayor Castor. I was just going to second, but by now I think I'm about full. Okay. <laughs> And Mr. Schisler, any comments? My second. That was my second. Okay. All right. Um, are there any other nominations? Going once. Going twice. Seeing no hands. Um, Ms. Mandel, do we need to take a vote, or, or can we appoint by acclamation? You could go ahead and appoint by acclamation. We just need to have that clear for the record. So, um, if there's if there's no other objections, I think uh, uh, we only have one nomination, and we're all on the same page um, to uh, appoint Ruth Reyes Burkhart for our ICEO. Congratulations, Ruthie. Thank so, you. Um, uh, congratulations, Ruthie. You're our new ICEO. I. Um, I wish you luck. I, uh, speaking on behalf of the whole board, we are rooting for you and pulling for you, and uh, we are here for you uh, if you need anything and if we can do anything to help you get through this time while you will um, have a very full plate. Um, you will be working with uh, HR, Ms. Hundley, and general counsel on the details of your interim position, any salary adjustments, et cetera, after this meeting, so we don't have to nail that down uh, now. But um, Ms. Burkhart, would you like to say a few words? Thank you. Thank you, Chair and, um, Chair Smith and the entire board. I'm really honored to be selected for the position of Hart Interim CEO. You know, my experience in the transit world started in New York City in 1990. I was a bus operator and worked through um, to a paratransit specialist and in the last 30, 20 of the last 30 years has been here at Hart. Um, and I still consider my experience behind the wheel a guiding factor in my day-to-day -day decisions. It's challenging, but a very rewarding career. And I think for what will be a short time in Hart's history, I look forward to strengthening the agency, focusing on what's important, our customer, our employees, and of course, fostering lasting community partnerships. And I look forward to working with this board and welcoming a new CEO in the coming months who will drive Hart into the future. So again, I'm honored to be selected, and I will dedicate myself to this new role as we navigate through the next few months together. And so thank you again. Well, thank, you. thank you so much for stepping up um, and, and offering to take this on. Um, very much appreciated. So with that, we can move on to the next piece of business, and that is the um, review of the recruitment. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Stevens um, and uh, Charlene Stevens of GovHR USA will um, present the recruitment. She's going to go through, uh, as I understand it, the top eight candidates. You've all received an information packet with a list of all the candidates as well as uh, thorough information about the uh, top eight candidates that um, went through the GovHR process. Um, Ideally, uh, just so just so you know you how to pay attention. Um, ideally, we can discuss these candidates and uh, possibly even narrow the field today to the top three or so right here. And if we've all done our homework and we all work hard today, 
Um, we can save ourselves the step of an ad hoc committee, although that is a possibility if we don't get there today. So um, as, as Ms. Stevens goes through her report, I would ask, she's going to go through one by one, I understand, and I would ask you to keep your questions brief and targeted to the specific candidates uh, one by one as she goes through them, and then we can wrap up the entire presentation with a more general questions and comments after we've gone through the candidates one by one. So the last thing I'll say is to ask you to please be mindful that this is a public meeting. It's on video, on the internet, and some of the candidates will be watching as well as their friends and family. And so let's all try to keep our comments positive as we ask questions and consider which of these candidates to advance to the, the next step. So um, Ms. Stevens, thank you for being here and you are, um, you've got the floor. All right, thank you very much. Again, I'm Charlene Stevens, a Senior Vice President with GovHR USA. It's been our pleasure to be helping you along in this search for your next CEO. Uh, we started with an extensive list of candidates, as you saw. We did narrow that down. There are, that, uh, there are, there are can some candidates also withdrew from the process themselves voluntarily. Uh, but the uh, eight candidates you have before you, I will walk through those candidates, share with you some of the insights from my interview interviews with them as well as comments from references. We have done an initial reference check on every candidate. Unless they were an internal candidate, an internal candidate we don't do the reference check on in the first step because we assume that since they're working for you, you know, they've had a good reference prior. But if they move forward from this process, then we would again do reference uh, further reference checks on those candidates as well. And I'll just be referring to them kind of as by number as we go through this process and such. I think that that's the easiest way. So we'll just start with candidate one. Uh, candidate one has over 25 years of experience in the public sector. Uh, most recently is working in an organization, Jacksonville Transit Authority. So similar in size and um, organization to heart. Uh, some of the strengths are experience in knowing Florida, knowing the state partners, experienced with all the modes of transit that you're operating. I think the strengths of this candidate are in organizational development, employee engagement, has really done a lot in his current organization um, to actively implement, implement a high performance organizational culture into the JTA. So collaborative leadership style, very intentional about employee engagement. Also gets out into the organization to understand the operations, quarterly town halls, um, out in, with frontline employees, as well as management, mid-management level employees, understands the core operations, finances, the connection of transit, I think, to economic development, also issues of equity, and you can see that in some of the written materials that were submitted. Uh, references refer to the candidate as an innovator, always on the look for how things can improve and be better. Also noted the uh, candidate integrated performance management, which had not been done before in the organization. Uh, seen as authentic, overachiever, very data-driven in approach. Questions on candidate one? Uh, Commissioner Overman, you're recognized. Um, no, actually, well, that was before we got started, but I, I did want to make reference to um, having had the luxury of uh, participating in a selection uh, process recently when we selected our uh, lobby team. Um, the framework and scoring process that our our departments, our heart departments use for uh, consolidating the information in order and scoring to be able to come up with a, a, a smaller number or to just comparatively look at how we've all as members are looked at this was really helpful. Um, it really was very, it sort of framed the metrics of what's most important to heart and to the organization and to our mission. So while I appreciate where we're going with this with the eight candidates, um, if there is a possibility before we make a decision that we have a tool somewhat similar to that, I would, I would recommend it. it. It just helps in framing what we're learning about today in addition to what we've read when you provided us the materials. Thank you. 
And as far as candidate one is concerned, I met him at a conference last year and was very impressed. So I'll just stop there. Thanks. Thank you. Any other uh, questions specific to candidate one? Seeing none. It's you again, Ms. Stevens. Okay, candidate two. Um, has some strong innovation skills, really knowledge of the industry and best practices, service models, funding opportunities, understanding what grant funders, particularly federal partners, are looking for and needing and wanting, strengths in strategic planning. This candidate probably gave the strongest answer when I asked about the uh, impacts of COVID and really saw it from multiple uh, angles, land use, microtransit. I think where this candidate has a weakness is that the candidate does lack the operational experience compared to other candidates uh, in, the, in the selection process. References referred to candidates as active listener, really good at letting people be heard and engaged in a collaborative leader. Thank you. Um, questions, comments about candidate two? Seeing none. Moving to candidate three. Yeah, candidate uh, three started a, started a career really in engineering before moving more into a planning realm. Has experience in a few different agencies, MARTA, the Jefferson Birmingham Transit Agency, as well as the Atlanta Beltline. Uh, Birmingham probably is similar to Birmingham Jefferson, similar to Hart, and really uh, went in that when the role with that organization worked to improve stakeholder employee relationships was very deliberate and intentional about that. For example, in terms of employee relations, they had union contracts and union negotiations that had been stalled for over two years. It was very intentional about restarting that process, rebuilding those relationships, similar to within the community and the community partners. So really take the time to learn the stakeholder uh, priorities, very collaborative. Um, implemented new services, such as the route from downtown to the airport, first commuter transit system, uh, service uh, in uh, Birmingham, Jefferson, has, um, been, has experience uh, with a referendum with the Atlanta Beltline, and again with studies and looking at things such as transit-oriented oriented development opportunities along the corridor, along the station, well-versed in the funding opportunities that are available for transit and has been able to secure those funding. Uh, opportunities and, and grants for organizations had a very strong customer focus, talked about creating a culture and expectation that anyone working for the organization be a frontline employee and take responsibility for solving problems or uh, moving things forward and taking responsibility for a customer. References referred to the candidate as passionate, diligent, a team player able to understand the technical details but also the broader picture. So. I think a well-rounded candidate and experience. Thank you. And uh, Director Mechanic, you're recognized. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I, I want to ask, um, I had a question about where this person is on the org chart. I couldn't tell whether he's second or third uh, tier. And if you could mention that with all of the applicants, because some of them were just not clear where they were in the in the organization. Thank you. Thank you. And I was kind of wondering too um, about. It looks like his most recent experience it oversees six employees, so it's kind of similar to uh, Mr. Mechanic's question. Yes, his most recent experience, so in Jefferson, Birmingham, he was second kind of in the organization, the second leadership role. Uh, current uh, role is overseeing six um, and would be a second, you know, would be in a second in the organization and reports to the director. Thank you. Hey, Any Madam other Chair, questions? this is... Yeah, yep. Madam Chair, this is Director McLean. I apologize for attending late. I've been listening since candidate one. On this candidate and, and others, um, my question would be to the recruiter also is, when we say they, they are you know, managing six employees, that's a direct employee. Yes, um, that's if a direct number, report. 
Yeah, if they're in an organization and they're not the number two, they just have six directly reporting to them. Of course, they oversee a lot larger group of people, I would imagine, as the number two person in that organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think this organization, the current, you know, is if you look, it's um, in the materials, has six, has 50 full-time employees and an overall budget of $91 million. Right, right, and I'm on that page there. So, okay, yep. I just wanted to make sure we're talking the same thing. They're direct reports. It doesn't mean he doesn't oversee the bulk of them, but they're direct reports. Right, and he, you know, and he reports to the chief operating officer. Correct. But has had okay. experience kind of being the second in command as overseeing bus operations and all of those operations uh, in a previous role. Okay, very good. Thank, right. you. Thank I, you, madam. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't clear. Um, I was following up on Director Mechanic's uh, point about the org chart, right? So, right. right. Um, okay. Any other questions or comments on number three? Okay. Uh, candidate four has over 30 years of experience in transit, working for. Uh, Number two, kind of two very large transit organizations, uh, Chicago and Los Angeles, currently oversees all rail operations for Los Angeles, spent uh, the majority of his career with the Chicago Transit Authority. Actually, Do you think yeah. there's, there's some noise. I think if we could maybe have someone mute, it's... Uh, so has spent started his this this candidate started his career as really a frontline employee as a driver operator and worked his way up through that into management roles and uh, and such and so I think has uh, has done almost every role I think in transit on different levels and such and is part of the senior executive leadership for the current for his current employer and so. Uh, and in that, in that, so he in reports to the chief operating uh, officer in that in that organization. Uh, experienced with all forms of transit, started a BRT line, um, intimately involved with rail at this time. Experienced with major events. I think looks at things and talks uh, as I spoke with him through an equity framework. Understand, you know, that employee and leadership should hopefully reflect that diversity, or at a minimum, at least be a voice. Those that are transit dependent are some of the words that he used in the interview. Uh, has dealt with budget shortfalls, dealt with service changes, had strong ideas for employee development engagement. And again, I think because he was a frontline employee himself, understands the value of teaching in those roles, uh, being out in the organization, being present and being known in the organization, customer service as well. You know, uh, values the the uh, the value of every customer, and everyone and everyone has a role to play in that. Actually, developed a customer service experience committee for the board of his current employer. Uh, references referred to the candidate as a natural team player, motivated by his team, um, and motivates his team by by caring for their success. Understands the importance of what he does and influences others in the same manner. Very results oriented. This candidate, I think, if you looked at materials, you'd know it is probably at the higher end of your salary range, and I did vet that with this individual to ensure that, to see if there's flexibility there. He has assured me there is some flexibility there. Very clear kind of where the range is, um, but I think he would be at the upper, you know, the upper end of your range, and that would be something you may want to vet further if you decide to move forward with this candidate. But it does have quite a bit of experience in overall operations of transit. Thank you. Any questions, comments? I, I think that um, broad range of experience is a, is a real plus um, coming into uh, an organization like HART to um, identify with um, all levels of the um, staff as um, a, a Transit as a career, um, by example, it's a powerful story, I think. Um, okay, hey, that's, yes? Yeah, this is Director McLean again. I, I just want to say I agree with you. When I looked at this one, I thought this was a fairly rounded candidate. 
um, that brought some strong capabilities with them, um, particularly um, for Hart and, and what we're um, what we're going through currently right now with ridership and of course with the staffing and all that. So I, I looked at this candidate very favorably, but I, I agree with you. That is all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Smith. Yes, if I could, um, I was actually trying to let all the candidates be presented, but as long as you. <laughs> um, spoke here. Uh, I'd say also, um, I totally agree with you. I think um, this candidate is uh, has an extensive and very rich background in terms of what they could bring. I was very excited to hear that equity was one of the uh, issues that this candidate expressly made. I would say as well that I think the same as well as um, candidate number three, that I am um, equally impressed by um, the operational experience, uh, the uh, experience in different agencies and different places, which I think is very important, and by the extensive experience that um, both uh, candidate three and four um, bring to the table. So I'll just uh, put that out. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, I was, you know, saying, well, we can have this big general discussion at the end, but but candidate by candidate might be a point to pull out, highlight anything that that you noticed or or that you want to ask Ms. Stevens about uh, just just briefly as we go. So um, uh, feel free at, at each candidate to um, pick out anything about that candidate that that you want to make sure that we don't miss or or to ask Ms. Stevens about. So next up is uh, number five. Just, oh, Commissioner, sorry. I just note on that last candidate um, for people that had asked him, he does oversee four superintendents and six rail divisions in the current. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So that would be his direct reports, but then the, there's divisions under that. Great. And number five. Great. Candidate number five has about 25 years of experience uh, in the transit industry. It is knowledgeable in all aspects of transit, really does value transit and the, uh, value public transit and the value it brings to those who use it and need it. A phrase that kind of I wrote down as we talked is that, you know, she, the phrase she used was transit can be life changing and life supporting for individuals. Um, excellent strategic planning skills led the efforts in New Orleans post-Katrina to reimagine the service and the service delivery in that. And that was, a, you know, and the challenges that, that were encompassed in all of that. So very skilled, comfortable with engaging the public, uh, particularly in a strategic planning format in forums and just engaging with the public in general and being, part, being visible as part of the community, uh, really, uh, because she was in a private sector role serving in the organization, really embedded herself in the community, learned the community uh, as part of that to try to, to be uh, better able to help them with their strategic planning forward thinking, very solid financial analytical budget skills, uh, strong development of staff at all levels, also an individual who noted, you know, wearing comfortable shoes, getting out in the organization, being at the first bus pullout and the last bus pull in, and the importance of doing that, the importance of writing the system and writing all of the system to understand the system from that uh, perspective. Also had a strong focus on the customer. I uh, use the term, you want to be the people mover of first choice. You know, if she were the heart CEO, would want heart to be the people mover of first choice um, and value every customer that's engaging uh, with the system and, so, uh, and uh, in that process also. So again, has experience with all modes of transportation that heart is operating and additionally has experience with the ferry system. Has seen other transit organizations, I think, because of her role. Uh, and so, you know, may be able to bring you some of those ideas and best practices of how other organizations um, operate and other perspectives. References, uh, again, validated her strength in the strategic planning uh, skills and community relations. Forward thinker, big picture, motivating were some of the words that were used by the references to describe this candidate. Um, and then this uh, candidate in terms of uh, their uh, responsibility when she was in, kind of embedded in uh, the New Orleans organization. She had five kind of direct reports in that. 
Um, she's had up to 15 direct reports in her other uh, roles and such, and so, and she is a member of the senior leadership team for this organization. Thank you. Director Mechanic, you recognized? Uh, yes, Madam Chairman. Um, I had spoken to Charlene on the phone this week, and I originally was concerned about uh, this candidate's um, primary uh, uh, experience was as a consultant, and I guess I would just like to ask her this, to respond in the same way she did with me as far as whether or not you see that as a negative or a positive in in connection with her experience. Thank you. I think I saw it as a positive, um, and I think that's what I shared with you, is that I think it's, it's an opportunity sometimes to learn some best practices uh, that an individual's been able to see from being in that role of different organizations. And I think so, and oftentimes we see, too, where consultants are really looking to make this transition to really now be able to focus on one one organization, one project, one opportunity versus jumping in and out of organizations. Uh, and I think that this, that's what this individual is ready for. Uh, Commissioner Smith? Um, Director Mechanic, are you done? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Commissioner Kent? Thank you. Um, I as well had the um, same concerns, and I talked to uh, Ms. Stevens about that as well. This candidate seems like a, uh, uh, from all the language that I've heard, um, sounds like a very uh, appealing candidate, but um, I was concerned that this candidate's entire career um, was spent in private uh, industry, um, as well as even in the transit uh, side of it. So I, I think there's, um, uh, you know, multiple sides and I and I know you explained to me about the um positives but also we discussed somewhat that there can you know that I mean I just I think that can be uh something that can weigh in in all ways. Just I'm just trying yeah, to Yeah and in to fairness there can be a that. transition and I, I would agree with you Commissioner and I did share that too that there uh there can be sometimes a transition uh from somebody who's coming from private sector into public sector and the different kind of rules and regulations that the public sector operates under versus a private sector uh individual too so there you know that that could that would be something i think too if you move moving forward with the candidate you know there are questions to explore in the next uh in the next round if this candidate rises to the rises to one of the top candidates but i but I do think she has some good skills that that could, that could help you going forward. Thank you. Uh, Director Hudson, you're recognized. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, Charlene, good to see you. Um, my, my kind of question going off what, what Commissioner Kemp just asked is, what does it mean for someone to have sort of a C-suite title that's in service to a public agency, but still be with, with the private company. I guess I'm just a little bit confused on, on, on what that means. Like, were, were they on the, the payroll of the public agency and, and thus, you know, somewhat immersed in the unique uh, norms of a public agency, or were, were they just kind of on, like, I was going to extend it, temp status? I just would, that's a little bit confusing to me at this naming convention. Yeah, I think it can go both ways. I think in some of the this in some of the roles of this candidate, can it has been really in a consultative in a consultative ca ca capacity. I think in the role with uh, Norda in New Orleans was really more on the ground and in site on site. i um, still was a contracted essentially a, it was a contracted employee more or less for the organization, but was really um, active in the community, active in planning and helping them through their strategic planning efforts and overseeing staff in that process, so more embedded in that role. Okay, so embedded, but not necessarily, I guess, a, a, a public not employee, a whatever public that employee. means, yeah. Okay, that's right. helpful. Would Thank not you. have been a public employee. Okay, thanks, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. An interesting candidate, and um, I had the same, sounds like I had the same conversation as uh, a couple of other uh, uh, board members with Ms. Stevens. Um, so that takes us to number six. Number six. And and Madam Chair. Oh, did I miss somebody? I'm, I'm sorry. It's Director McLean again, and I'm calling in by phone versus um, 
uh, virtual. Um, my my comments on on this candidate was um, it, it, consultant uh, her whole time um, lacks a little bit of what I would call that day to day interaction and day to day decision making that is needed within an organization like Hart. Um, uh, as a consultant, of course, and I, and I think uh, Director Hudson hit a little bit on it. As a consultant, you're not held responsible for those activities or actions or decisions. Um, whereas, a, you know, where as as the CEO, you are held responsible, or, or if you've worked in the industry uh, on the uh, on the public sector side. So, those are my concerns when we look at a candidate like this. Great qualifications and all, but the day to day fight, um, I'm not seeing it in their resume. Thank you. Thank you, Director McLean, and don't worry about um, uh, breaking in. Um, we will accommodate everybody, whether they can uh, raise their hand digitally or, or just speak up, so no worries. That was number five. Now we're on to number six. Yeah, number six uh, is an internal candidate. Uh, did not apply, uh, in, was an internal candidate, did not apply in, in the last uh, search for CEO. At that time, felt was new to the organization, new to the community, and wanted to better learn and know the community. Has had some opportunity to do that. Obviously, the candidate does know your organization, knows your stakeholders, the challenges uh, that you face, and knows the, the partners um, in the state as well. Uh, is involved very much in your day-to-day -day operations now and overseeing a large segment of your services. Has experience also with change management in a former community was when, it, when the individual was in Tallahassee. Uh, led a system-wide realignment from the wheel and spoke to a grid system. So really, the, um, and did over, I think, as you said to me, uh, 200 and some 40 outreach opportunities. So understands the value of community engagement, willing to be engaged in the community. Also willing to invest the time as the CEO in employee engagement and the importance of being visible again in the organization, understanding um, the opportunity to be out and be visible to bus operators and frontline employees as well as your management team um, and your leadership team and the board, able to coach and mentor staff, um, you know, has, and it feels it's important to recognize success of employees. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments? About candidate number six. Seeing none, hearing none. Uh, yeah, Chair, Chair uh, Smith, yeah, Director Mechanic. mechanic. Oh. Director Mechanic, you're recognized. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, on this candidate, I, I realize he's in house, but I didn't hear you mention anything about references. I may have missed it, but could you tell us what? you did in in connection with this candidate because you reported on the others about references yeah, and we what did they not said. in the first go round with internal candidates we do a reference check because it's our assumption that they have already that since they are working with with you they have uh -huh. a positive reference if, if you decide to move the candidate forward after that then we would again gather some outside references on the candidate okay thank you Director Williams, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Smith. I, I just um, had the same question in regards to employee and feedback and reference material. So if, if it's not available at this time, I understand. Thank you. Thank you. And that is number six. Seeing no more uh, questions, number seven. Yeah, number seven uh, has also an extensive experience experience in transportation, about 30 years of experience overall is the second uh, in his organization, so is the chief operating officer, so second in command in his current organization, overseeing uh, and direct overseeing the bus operations of that organization. Previously, it had experience with rail. Uh, has been, uh, works in an organization that uh, may be similar in size, but has a very, has a multi-stakeholder model, six independent uh, cities and they have to sell the value of transit to the region on a regular basis. Their funding me mechanism is a little bit different in that they start the year with really a zero-based budget, and so they make the case on value and budget every year, and you know he's intimately involved in their budget process and making sure that the budget reflects the organization's priorities. 
big picture leader, uh, focus on where the organization wants to be in his words, um, yet has the ability to drill down, has done a lot with KPIs or key performance indicators in the organization. Uh, also, an individual who gets out of the organization feels that that's important, uh, you know, because he's overseeing, for instance, bus operations in his current role, uh, will be out in the bus lounges and the operators' lounges and walking through them on a regular basis to give people an opportunity to engage and talk with them and get out. Um, ask staff what they're experiencing and seeing and spend time building relationships across the um, all levels of the organization. Has worked with all modes of tran all the modes of transportation, including a ferry service or ferry, yeah, ferry service. Uh, you know, customer service. I thought he had a, a kind of interesting approach, I guess, or was you know when we talked about customer service, is that you need to have a positive customer service and make sure that you're hiring people that like people uh, in that process, and that's an important part of the customer service for him. Uh, references referred to him as a motivational leader. Never leaves people guessing on what needs to be accomplished but gives people room to be successful. So sets out what the goal is and gives people an opportunity to get there uh, and doesn't micromanage in that process. All right, thank you. I've got a couple of hands left up. I think, they, uh, I think they're left up from previous. Um, uh, Director Hudson, do you want do you wish to speak? Director Mechanic, is your hand left over or would you like to speak? Left over hand. Okay, and, and Commissioner Kent. Thank you. I would like to speak. Um, I was very impressed by Candidate Seven. I thought they had great depth and breadth to their experience, and also just by the um, just like the uh, customer service motivational leader. Um, you know, I think um, uh, Candidate Seven. Um, stands out to me as well as the other candidates in terms of their uh, operational experience and depth and uh, years. And um, I, I think Candidate 7 is a very strong candidate. Thank you. Any other comments, questions about Candidate 7? Um, uh, Director Hudson. Hey, th thanks, Commissioner. And, and I had to step out briefly, so if this was addressed, um, Charlene, you could just say it was addressed, but you mentioned something very unique about the funding situation for Candidate 7, the Candidate 7's organization, um, yeah. and that I think they start, they start from $0 every, start every, every cycle, yeah. which I know we have our uh, challenges with, with heart, but that struck me as a much more challenging uh, situation. So if you could maybe shed some light on sort of, uh, of what the deal is with Hampton Roads Transit and how that might affect it in good ways. Uh, and in bad ways, I guess, uh, his, his background. Yeah, I can give you, a, a, as he described the funding scenario to me, so there are six cities that yeah. are uh, independent, and so they get about 40%, 48% of their funding comes from those six cities, 20% comes from state, 30 is federal funding, and the rest would come from their fare boxes. Uh, and so they operate really without a strategic reserve. So as he said, they start and they end, they end each year um, at zero. And so... You know, the skill set probably that he brings to you in that regard is that ability to really manage a lean organization or to really align budget with what the strategic priorities are because that's what they have to do on a regular basis, as well as the ability, I think, with, to engage with multiple stakeholders. But, and to follow up on that, um, that doesn't mean that's exactly what he would do here. Right. It does right. not. It's just, yeah. It doesn't mean that he can. I don't would say, Commissioner, in talking with him, I think he would prefer to be operating with some strategic reserves. I think that's, uh, you know, a difficult way to operate. But, you know, that, that is how they, they operate. And, they've, and, and he's been successful in helping them, you know, achieve some of their objectives in that. It came at a time where there were some outdated buses and some things like that that there weren't plans for and has been helpful in getting them through those times. So, I, I feel certain if he made it through this process that our CFO would insist on some strategic reserves. <laughs> I think he would be quite happy to have that. Yeah. Um, but, but it must have been a uh, certainly a, a challenging and learning experience to do it the other way. 
Yeah, and it, I, and I, I think that is much more about function of how the cities choose to provide funding, and mm -hmm. so they don't like to see a large reserve being built up. Okay. They fund. And um, I see no other here, no other uh, director. So we can go to number eight. Okay, uh, number eight is a candidate that has uh, quite a bit of public sector experience and has got some real depth and breadth to that. Much of his career has been actually setting up and establishing departments for cities and other um, entities and such. So I think that maybe is actually a strength that he could that he could bring to the organization is that he's been able to stand up departments and things like that uh, from scratch and build uh, build leadership teams within those organizations. He did very clearly with me address up front what might be a concern of yours, which is the short tenures and that he has been uh, kind of setting things up and moving on. And he conveyed to me and that he would like to be in an organization where he can now focus more on organizational development and sees heart as something that's established but there's opportunities to build within that and build a leadership team and focus on the organizational uh, development component rather than just starting from, from scratch. Uh, his experience, I think, because it is varied, so he does understand that connection, the connections between land use, transit, kind of planning from transit on a real granular level as well as operating. Um, he had some experience in Raleigh and Wake County with a, rent, with a successful rent referendum and so the ability to engage the stakeholders and build a successful referendum uh, plan as well. Very solid I think, financial and budget skills, and again, the importance of connecting the strategic priorities to the budget. Very collaborative approach to management. Very much talked about enjoying coaching people, was very proud of the fact that he's hired people, developed them into leadership roles in the organization, and even sometimes with, um, that they've gone on and they exceeded their leadership roles with him and moved into other organizations, and that's something that he values. References uh, described him as inclusive, leading by example, works closely to build, uh, closely with his leadership team to set up strong work groups, organized, kind, a forward thinker, team player style, hardworking, and leads by example. Uh, you know, he's had some varied experiences, so he's been more in a public works role, but in that role, in some of those they've had, he's had the oversight of transit and transit operations, so in Raleigh, um, also when he was in uh, San Antonio, implemented the BRT there as well as involved with the streetcar in Dallas, so has had those points with, with uh, transit operations as well as a bigger picture. And he would be a member of you know, the city's overall senior leadership team uh, as well, uh, reporting to the assistant city manager. Uh, um, I was just checking to remind myself, um, how big is uh, his current, has he had experience with um, agencies our size? Yes, he yeah. has. I'm just trying to kind of getting back to my notes too um, on this candidate. So his uh, current current organization, the total in the organization is 14,000 employees. He currently has 200, but he has had more uh, direct reports than that. So he's had over 500 uh, FTEs when he was in uh, Raleigh mm -hmm. uh, and then was... Uh, in also uh, the city of San Antonio so had over uh, 400 employees that were uh, there in a 700 person department. So I think his work in you know, similar size uh, organizations where I can understand an organization of the size and complexity of heart. Great, okay. Any other uh, questions or comments pertaining to candidate eight? Madam Chair, uh, this is Director McLean. Yes, Mr. Director McLean. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it, I, I too just a little concerns with this candidate, primarily, in, and it was addressed of the the job hopping. Um, you know, he's moved six or seven times in the last um, fifteen years. Um, the one question I did have for our recruiter is um, in two thousand four through two thousand nine. It looks like he worked for a company called Five Star Engin Engineering. Do you know if that was his own company? 
that was his own company. Okay. Um, and is yeah. it in existence now? I, I think it's a registered business. I don't know that he's a, that it's active. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. No more questions. Okay. And uh, Director Schisler, Councilman Schisler. Yes, thank you. Thank you for uh, explaining the um, lack of a better term, the job hopping that, that appeared for, for candidate number eight. Um, that was a, a bit of a red flag for me, considering that there were um, not many of them were really dealing with transportation until the very, very end. So I appreciate the, you clarifying that. It does, it does change uh, uh, the circumstances on that. Um, that. That was all I had. That was a comment on that. Thank you. Um, so um, having been through each of these, um, do we have any board comment um, or discussion about how we might Here's what I'm thinking is if we if we had a little board discussion, we could begin to see where uh, people are in terms of the top three-ish uh, candidates to to four max. But hopefully, um, Ms. Stevens, you you would really like us to um, end up with two or three to uh, proceed to interviews. Well, I think that's really is the board's prerogative and such mm -hmm. um, of how you have uh, where you have alignment if you have commonality and certainly if you have uh, there is a natural sense that you have two to three candidates that um, all of you agree on or the majority of you agree on you're comfortable proceeding that way you certainly could proceed to an interview process with those candidates if you have more there's also you we can there you know I think in the past you had done a video interview with candidates to gather more information from them. You know, they had filmed a video, um, a response to some video questions. And so they videotaped themselves responding to questions. It was a one way. Um, and that could also be done to uh, in this process. All right. So um, now everybody is feeling much more talkative and I've got a, a row of, of directors to speak. and, and uh, Let's just um, hear each other out a little bit before we see if we have uh, some consensus emerging. We might take a straw poll or something. We'll start with, um, I think, uh, Councilman Schistler, I think you're left over. No, I did have a follow. I did have a general question for, for Ms. Stevens. Um, was, and may, maybe you covered it and I missed it. Was the, uh, the, the prospect of the uh, funding, the sales tax issue, of it ultimately being defeated. Was that individually discussed with these candidates? All of, the candidate, all of the candidates are aware of that as a possibility. We called it out in the recruitment uh, brochure. We did ask, and one of the questions we I asked the candidates was, you know, how would you ensure Hart is on sustainable financial uh, footing with or without the referenda? Okay, the reason, the reason I asked that, and I apologize for cutting you off, the reason I asked that is because at the last go around, we did this before, that was a late issue question that was asked, and people actually dropped out, said at this point, I'm not interested. I don't really feel like fighting that game. And I, if I'm not mistaken, and I was unable to locate candidates, if, if I'm wrong on that, somebody please correct me, because that's, that, that to me creates are, an issue. You are correct. There is a candidate that withdrew the last time. Was uh, it but because of that reason? Uh, I don't believe it was that reason specifically. Uh, you know, to, to me, that candidate shared, the, shared that he had other that he had things that he decided he wanted to see through in his current role. Okay. And okay. so, and does remain interested. Uh, as I said, all candidates I talked to were aware of the sales tax. Were aware of the status of the sales tax and the possibility that it might not be available. And to a person, I think every candidate, when we ask, when I asked that question, just discussed the need to really build to, you know, build multiple, both financial scenarios. And so you look at the organization without it and you build a financial plan from that. You build a financial plan if you're successful. And many of the candidates uh, also just also talked about then also, developing a plan for 
you know, if there's a desire to go forward with a future referendum. So I, I don't think it would be any, I don't think that candidates will drop out or, or any of the candidates that we have currently see that as a reason to withdraw. Okay, as, as I back out and let everybody else chat, um, the, my, my, my general feeling on it is I think we can come, come up with a straw poll of two to three. I think three would be ideal. And uh, then start doing the personal interviews. But that's just my feeling. And I'm done. Thank you. That's my hope, too. Uh, Commissioner Kemp. Thank you. I want to start just by um, thanking HR Gov for doing such, um, uh, this is a, such a great uh, screening and list. And it was <laughs> a world of difference from the last time. Thank you so much. And I know I spent some time uh, talking with you and going over with you these candidates as well as some of the others um, that were on the longer list just to get a sense. I'd also um, like to thank you, um, Commissioner Smith. I think you have done a heavy lift with um, putting this all together um, and managing through this. So um, I think it, I think this is a, a, a great thing, the way that this was put out and done. And I'm very, very appreciative um, for for all this information and uh, you know a look at these candidates in this way. Um, I'd like to say that um, three of the candidates very much stand out to me. Um, all three in terms of, and I've mentioned them, in terms of their um, broad um, backgrounds, their breadth and depth, as I've said, um, their experience at various agencies, um, the comments that were made um, by um, some of the references they had, their own comments about um, the transit systems um, and and just looking at the systems they're working for and the places uh, that they are in um, in management and, and their achievements and and so for me the candidates I thought stood out were three four and seven um, and I thought they I'm just so pleased with the quality here I think it's just been very very good and I think. Um, all the candidates are have really some uh, you know great strengths, but three, four, and seven in terms of what we might um, be looking for and be able to carry the mantle here at heart. Um, I'm personally would very much like to have an opportunity to to speak with them and explore that further. Thank you, and, uh, Mayor Castor. You're recognized. Thank you. Uh, also, I want to uh, thank Charlene. I'm sure this isn't an, an easy task, especially with 163 uh, applicants. But I have a question, too, and it may be in the, in the material provided, so I apologize if it is. But did you have any type of rubric or any, or is that something that is, is uh, um, you know, prohibited from releasing? Because in speaking with my team, I clearly don't have a great deal of transit experience. But there were names on there that were very well recognized in the transit industry and weren't added to this short list. The three that uh, Deb uh, Prado, New York, uh, Senior Vice President, New York um, City Transit, Tim Borchers, who has extensive uh, transit experience and even has experience with Hart locally, and then Dennis Solinsky, uh, who runs the entire state of Connecticut transit. And then there are a couple more than one individual on the short list of eight don't have transit specific experience. Yeah, when we looked at candidates, we try to really, we don't use necessarily a rubric. We read through each individual and we try to match them with what we've heard from the board. Those three candidates I could speak to, I think with Prado, when we looked at that, that individual's experience, much of it was in the HR administration and the HR roles for the organization versus maybe the operational side. Uh, and so when I looked at that resume, I think Mr. Borchers um, has, most of his experience was also in- Can we have them? Someone mute their mic. And, and streetcar operation as well. And then I think uh, Selinsky, there were, there were some media uh, there that was concerning to us. Uh, and so uh, might be a very strong candidate, but did, you know, we also do media searches on individuals as well. 
in that process. And some candidates, I will say, too, are reluctant in a public, very public process such as this. As we start to talk to them, there are candidates that do withdraw themselves in the process. Okay, thank you. And uh, Madam Chair, just to, uh, I don't know how you're going to um, run the straw poll or since uh, Commissioner Kemp said her, her choice is uh, my three off of the list of eight would be four, five, and seven. Thank you. Um, Director Mechanic, you're recognized. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I, I wanted to just speak about the general process a little bit. Um, I personally was uncomfortable with what we did the last time with a subcommittee. I, I, I actually was not on the committee, but I attended the meetings because I was so interested. And I just feel like this is such an important decision that we we should just have the board go directly to conducting interviews, whoever we choose to interview here. And I think we could maybe save a little time and, um, and have more direct input from every uh, one of the board members. So I would just make that point. Um, I, I think I would also, you know, I, I know we haven't yet taken the straw poll, but, um, in reading through all the materials, after you get past the qualifications, the next most important thing to me was what kind of responses we got to the uh, uh, questions, the three questions. And I was looking for, you know, imagination and creativity and just plain interest. And on, on that basis, uh, number five jumped out at me immediately. In fact, I had ranked her perhaps the highest. And um, I also was impressed with uh, three and four and seven. So I might suggest rather than th a short list of three, maybe we could, I mean, I'm, I'm not yet reading the tea leaves because I know most board members haven't spoken but if we went to four, um, I think I don't. I don't think that's a huge burden for the board to interview four people. So I would just make that as a suggestion, and um, so I've also indicated my preferences as well. Thank you. Thank you, and and we'll see how this goes. I mean, maybe if we um, have a straw poll of four. A strong two or three will, uh, or three will emerge from that. But it would let people put their um, their next uh, tier into the pot. So, um, and and director mechanic, um, I am with you. That's why I sent out the memo to um, ask everyone to be sure to do their homework and avail themselves of uh, Miss Miss Stevens' availability for for discussion if we can. Uh, whittle this down with the whole board. That would that would be ideal. Um, if we can't, we have other processes to help. Uh, Director Hudson. Hey, uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Um, Charlene, uh, kind of going a little bit off of Mayor Castor's question. I I know that there was obviously a, a lot of applicants. Some with you know, I think very interesting titles. I saw that the, the CEO of India was one of the applicants. Um, and I knew there was a, a significant culling that had to happen to get us where we are now. And I knew that an element of that was obviously the, the media scrub. Can you talk a little bit more about that puts you in a tough place to determine really what constitutes problematic media reports versus the man or woman in the arena syndrome? I think if you Googled most of... Um, the people on this board, you'd probably find some un unsavory, perhaps unfair uh, criticism. So, I, I, in being mindful, this is a public hearing. Yeah. I guess without it being specific as to any of the applicants, can you give us a sense of some of the standards you use to determine whether or not there was something disqualifying versus potentially just troublesome? 
Yeah, and I think, you know, and I'm a former public employee as well, and so I know that that is not always, the media is not always fair. So what we look at are things that are uh, maybe concerning about work environment, and we look if there's multiple reports, not just maybe one and such. Um, also, sometimes, again, uh, short tenures and such, or uh, individuals who are saying they're going to stay in an organization at the same time they're applying for this role. Uh, and such could be a concern for us, too, where they've indicated they want to settle down into an organization at the same time we're receiving, you know, the media. So we look and we read the articles and really look and try to, um, and really try to understand uh, those things versus just simply, uh, you know, something that might be negative or a blogger or a concern and such. So we look at, you know, is there maybe a concerning pattern uh, in some cases or is it something that was, uh, you know, are there uh, large turnover in organizations under uh, leadership, things of that nature without being, you know, and, and some of those would be ones that we would say, you know, maybe are not candidates that we move forward with if we have other candidates that we think are stronger candidates to, to uh, interview in the process. Gotcha. Um, and just a really quick follow-up, and that will be the last question for me, is um, do we know whether or not any of these candidates are currently deep into other uh, recruitment efforts with other agencies? I, do, I don't know that. You know, yeah. we don't have a, candidates to yeah, disclose it, that necessarily, so I couldn't tell you if they are in, a, in another search. I can gotcha. tell you if they're in another um, search for us, and they are not. Okay. Thank you. Director Williams, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I just wanted to call out the fact that the process seemed to be very, very good. I enjoyed sitting back and just reading over all of the material, 152 plus pages, but I tell you what, it was very thorough and represented the work that we needed to be done ahead of time in order for us to make a decision that is long-lasting for Hillsborough um, Area Regional Transit Center. So um, the two things that I saw that were even more important to me after they met the qualifications was that just making sure the health of our business is good on internally as well as externally. And there were a few things that caught my attention with Candidate 3, the union experience and the employee a relationship, it's just critical that we have those relationships very, very um, cohesive and an ability to negotiate and understand what's best for the for heart as well as for their employees. And then on candidate number four, where they talked about the starting out in the lowest role possible and working them with themselves up to a senior um, level executive. And there's a lot to be said for that. And you don't get there based on uh, just your own doing. So in order for a person to start at that level and get to where they are now, they have to have the advocacy of their employees as well as the customers across the board. And when I see results-oriented as well as being a team player and equity and so forth and, and having to deal with the different um, uh, different entities of, of getting the budget, I, I think that's significant. And then uh, number five, what, what clearly gets me with number five is the life-changing and life-altering experience that um, happens when you are a person, such as myself in Hillsborough High School, riding the bus heartline every day to get to a job and knowing that in the future that's going to really propel the work that we all do because we can we we feel the experience and have actually touched it. So that there's something compelling to me for number five as well. And lastly, number seven, uh, when I think about a zero based budget, I cringe because that is what we experience and how we manage our business. I have to prove every dollar that I spend in the private sector and and then also what is significant is hiring people that like people. To, um, it, it, that's a big deal. It's, you can teach people to do a whole lot of other things, but you've got to be able to like your job, like dealing with people, like hearing criticism, knowing that it's going to turn into a gift eventually, and then also managing all of that with the, with the budget. And so um, 
those are my candidate the the selections I made. I'm sure I could narrow those down even more, but I just was compelled to share the uh, feedback that and the things that I am um, most uh, concerned with after they meet the qualifications of of being on the job and the experience and background and so forth. And and thank you, Madam Chair, for the experience and opportunity to, to talk about the candidates. Well, thank you, Madam Vice Chair, and uh, uh, for doing your, clearly doing your homework. Um, I appreciate the comments. Um, uh, Director Schistler, you're recognized. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, while we were at it, I wanted to add my selections in for the, uh, the straw poll, the straw vote, and there were three, four, and number seven, and we'll, we'll eradicate zero-based budgeting from his, lexic his lexicon. But uh, it's uh, those, those to me were the three strongest candidates. Thank you. Um, so in this kind of lobbying free form period before uh, we move forward, uh, is there and, um, and Madame any Chair, Vera, 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 if I may, I, I, I'm on my phone, so I can't. Councilman Vera, you're recognized. Thank you, Madame Chair. Yes, uh, you know, in... in in my review of these, I, it's funny that our colleague, Mr. Mechanic, uh, mentioned prospectively bringing up four, three, four, five, and seven, uh, to me, really seemed to be stellar. I, I also liked one a great deal. I'll be the first one to say that. Uh, but I, I haven't heard anybody else uh, forward uh, uh, number one outright. I know I, I remember reading um, that he had been considered in, in 19 and I believe withdrew. But I think that increasing that number to four um, certainly makes sense. Um, you know, what, what I'm lo looking for is somebody that is good working with people, uh, has good fiscal sound management skills, uh, but most importantly, obviously, has that robust transit experience and who can be ready for the next mm -hmm. level. Because uh, we, we talk about the penny sales tax in the Supreme Court right now. Uh, my, my view is we're going to get that no matter what. Uh, whether or not we get it uh, 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 right now, the Supreme Court rules uh, hopefully our way, or if we got to come back in 2022 and do it again. Um, but either way, that's coming. That 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 that's going to be coming. So we got to make sure that we have somebody who can, um, you know, live up to that. Um, but just just my my thoughts. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Well, I've been keeping track, and I see I see four candidates that. Um, uh, are emerging as um, uh, candidates that could make everyone happy. Uh, but I see a couple more hands. Mayor Castor, is sure. your hand up previous? No. And uh, Director Hudson? Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, I would just kind of echo uh, Councilman Vieira's comments on on number one. I mean, I you know, from from my view, this is not this is about who kind of peaks. I think our curiosity. I think these are all um, really really great candidates. What and I um, I agree on four. Um, I think four, five, and seven. I, I think number one, uh, Mr. Ferguson, I think intrigues me a little bit because of the deep experience in Florida. I'm a little kind of personally torn about the the importance of having really deep Florida experience, understanding that. Florida is not always seen as um, a hallmark of necessarily you know, you know, transit excellence compared to the Northeast or the, the West Coast. Um, but a, a lot of resources that we're going to need to work in our favor, I think, in, for the next you know, generations are, are going to be in Florida. So I, I'd be curious to hear more from, from candidate number one. Um, and in the balance of, of, of my uh, of the candidates that pique my curiosity would be four, uh, four five, and seven. Thanks. And Madam Chair, uh, Director McLean. Director McLean, you're recognized. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I just want to say first, uh, thank you for the process. This is uh, uh, far better than the last. And, and I do want to send out a, a good thank you out to GovHR. Um, we have the luxury of looking at eight stellar candidates here, so, so the selection is kind of hard. For me, um, and, and I don't want to repeat everything that everybody else said, the candidates that stood out were three, four, and five. Um, I'm, I'm in the side that I think with three candidates we can move forward, not four. If we do go to four, then I would go three, four, five, and seven. But three, four, and five are my candidates. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. And uh, I've got a couple more people. Director Harden, you're recognized. Yes. Thank you. Um, so, uh, yeah, I won't, again, repeat the things that have been said. I do like uh, the idea of oh, yeah. by Director Mechanic to cast a bit of a wider net um, and go with four candidates. I think that there is a consensus here that the same four seem to have stood out to all of us, but my... Uh, uh, my list would be three, four, five, and seven. Um, and uh, I would like to, you know, compliment the process I participated last time and the, you know, the uh, depth of the information that we got here is uh, is good. So thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, Commissioner Kemp, you're recognized. Thank you. As uh, having been one of the um, first to speak, I was trying to kind of narrow it into three. Um, but um, for me, if you said to me, what were the top four, I would have said three, four, five, and seven. I just had a little, you know, and, and certainly five was very compelling uh, with the statements. I think I might have said that at the time, kind of uh, grabbed you. Uh, so, and I can't see any reason why, you know, we shouldn't move forward with four. Um, and I think those are four strong, strong choices. Thank you. Um, Mayor Castor, you also had only offered three. If you got to do four, um, would you want to add anyone to your short list? Yes, I would add three. So I would have three, four, five, and seven. This is much easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, because those are, those would be my four as well. And, um, uh, let's see, who did we, oh, you know, and I will just mention that we did get a couple of, um, we did get a couple of votes for one that um, I can't help but notice that the people who were here when that candidate withdrew earlier uh, are, are not among those, so um, just saying. Um, and... Is there, so now that we are considering four, Ms. Stevens, do you think four would be uh, possible? Yeah, I think four is possible. And, you know, you may have a candidate that does withdraw out of the top four as well. That could happen. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes candidates uh, will, will make that choice or that their, or their current employer will, will you know, see them in this process and encourage them to stay. So four is not an unrealistic number. If you want to move forward with that, uh, we can move forward with that if that's where there's commonality. Madam Chair, Gil Schussler. Yes. Would you like a motion to move this forward? Not quite, because I want to ask um, Commissioner Overman, who has not piped up on uh, our, our what has emerged at our straw poll. Commissioner Overman, do you have thoughts on these candidates? Well, I uh, will admit right up front that HR in hiring is not my strong suit. Um, and uh, so I'm very hesitant. I do agree with the consensus that we've heard so far. Uh, three was, is, is amazing, um, as well as four. Um, I do have some reservations, although I'm very impressed with her responses in candidate five. Uh, seven is pretty amazing too, but of course I I want eight and one as well. You know, so I you know could we mash them all together and get like the superhero in the world? But I you know if I had to to choose, I I do like I said earlier and when first got started. I have met candidate one, um, very strong uh, individual and very innovative. Um, but as was mentioned, he had was gone before, but I. I'm not really sure why he's coming back, but uh, we we are uh, a very large area. We with large challenges, and and uh, those that are problem solvers and problem seekers to solve problems uh, probably have a propensity for applying again. So I, I which is not a bad thing because we've got some challenges that we have to get through. Um, but I, I'm willing to go with the consensus as as recommended. Um, the three, four, five, and seven seem like excellent choices because they're all excellent choices. So I, yeah, I will um, 
go with the consensus as it stands. Thank you. Director Hudson, you're recognized. Uh, I think that was a hangover from earlier. I'm good. All right. And uh, Director Williams, I have your choices written, but um, staff is asking for you to confirm on the record what your choices were. My choices are three, four, five, and seven. Right. That's what I thought. Um, so at this point, I mean, um, we really have uh, everybody landed on three, four, five, and seven. And, and I think that is a, a testament to Ms. Stevens bringing this uh, forward to us. Such, and let me, let me say, uh, we have a wonderful pool of candidates, as, as so has been said before. Um, all of these candidates um, have a very strong background and strengths that, that would be a great assets to our organization. And um, it's difficult. It, it's difficult for me. I sat with this long time. I spoke with Ms. Stevens to, um, to filter them down. So um, my our thanks to everyone who has uh, participated so far. And um, um, ho hopefully we can progress with these forward to the next step, and it won't be too difficult. But um, uh, I, I will say that I'm really optimistic and, and hopeful, especially seeing all this agreement on the board today uh, with where we're landing. I think that that will hopefully convey to these candidates that, that uh, whoever does emerge out of this is going to come in with uh, broad board support and, um, and be able to uh, work with us. And, and we're very excited to be um, moving ahead with a new CEO. So, um, uh, Ms. Stevens, if you'd like to, well, um, I guess we should have a, a board motion for uh, for the four candidates, just for the record. So, Mr. Schuster made that motion. Yeah, I moved to three, four, five, seven for further consideration in the opening. Yep. Second. Second, Director McCorney. Oh. Okay. We, uh, <laughs> motion by Director Schistler, second by a couple of people, including Director McLean. Um, so, uh, would staff please call a roll call vote? Good afternoon, this is Danielle from Hart. Please say yes or no after your name is called. Director Castor. Uh, this is Ian Winnie with Mayor Castor's office. She had to step away for a moment. Thank you. Director Hardin. Yes. Director Hudson. Yes. Director Kemp. Yes. Director Knight. Director McLean. Yes. Director Mechanic? Yes. Director Overman? Yes. Director Schistler? Yes. Director Smith? Yes. Director Vieira? Yes. Director Williams? Yes. Thank you. The motion passes unanimously. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, and let the record reflect that uh, 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 Mayor Castor also did um, indicate that she supported three, four, five, and seven before she had to leave the meeting. So, um, if uh, Ms. Stevens could um, help to lead us in where our next steps and timeline uh, will take us. Yeah, and certainly uh, Crystal can jump in too. Um, in this process, but I think what I am hearing from the board is you want to proceed to have in interviews with these candidates and have one-to-one -one interviews, and so we can facilitate that process with the four candidates. I think we would like to facilitate that process within the next, you know, uh, couple of weeks prior to the end of November, if possible, uh, just because we'd like to try to keep the process moving as much as we can and understand your schedule. So I would work with your staff to determine some blocks of time that are available for you. Uh, we would schedule the time probably for 45 minutes to an hour. It may not take that much time, but I think 30 minutes is maybe a little bit too short 
in a virtual setting, so maybe to a lot up to 45 minutes, you know, or with the candidates or an hour, and then that gives a little bit of a break sometimes between for both the candidate and uh, yourselves if you're doing it consecutively, and then schedule those. And then I think the, ne the next step after that would be to come back to your, you know, your, re your regular scheduled meeting, and again, your staff may have to clarify, I think your next scheduled meeting is November 1st or sec November 1st? November 2nd. November 2nd, thank you. And so you could come back potentially November 2nd if we are able to complete the interview, you know, the interviews before that time to have a further discussion and decide who your preferred or your top candidate is at that time. And you could also have candidates, you know, make a short presentation to the board at that meeting as well. And you would then have the opportunity to collectively hear from the candidates you know, in a collective way so that you're hearing the same message from the same candidate. It could be a very short, you know, they could answer a few questions that we propose that, that are standard or just simply asking them to prepare a five or ten minute presentation to introduce themselves, why they're the best candidate for heart, and maybe what they would, uh, what their first six month plan would look like, something like that. But we could work, that's, that's what I would see as your potential next step. And so uh, talking about 45-minute-ish um, interviews one-on-one -on -one, which with each board member for each of the four candidates between now yeah. and yeah. November 2nd. And then um, uh, I, would, I would think it would be a good idea to hear some kind of uh, short presentations uh, or have them available and, and have them available for a final little round of question and answer um, at the at the board meeting, is that um, any problems with that? No, I, don't think, I don't. I don't think there would be. I think, and you could certainly. And what I would maybe suggest is we ask them to prepare a short, you know, just a short presentation to you, and then board members uh, could ask any follow up questions to the candidates in that setting, mm -hmm. and you could, you know, indicate it, you know, uh, five to ten minutes. A, maybe a 10 minute presentation and you could allot again 30 minutes per candidate in that process mm -hmm. um, that sounds that sounds great to me if we can uh, get that all scheduled with everybody um, and the candidates as well and and you miss Stevens but uh, that sounds great with me are there I see a couple of hands up in the queue and I'll just ask too if uh, board members have any um, other thoughts about the process um, from here to, to there. But uh, for now, Director Mechanic, you're recognized. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I, I mainly raise my hand to thank Charlene for <coughs> doing such an excellent job. This was highly professional. Um, I think I've been through this process at heart five times. And this has been clearly the best and most efficient that I've seen and, and the best quality in terms of the work product here. It's just, just been excellent. And, and I also want to thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, you, you have gently guided us through a very, um, what could have been a very difficult um, uh, meeting, and you've, you've made it as easy as possible for us to get through this. And I would also just say you were asking about the follow-up procedures. I think everything that's been described is, uh, sounds great to me. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, Commissioner Overman, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, and again, thank you to both Ms. Stevens and to our chair. Uh, this is, is uh, went very, very well, and it sounds like we've got consensus and a, and a path to move forward. Uh, two things regarding next steps. The November 2nd meeting is after the um, waiver of uh, in-person meetings of a quorum, and we will have individuals that will want to attend that meeting um, virtually, possibly, to avoid flying. So I was curious about the format of that meeting and location, if that's been addressed as of yet. And possibly um, Lena Pettit 
might help us with that? Questions about... Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, if Lena isn't getting on, this is Julia Mandel. Okay. I can tell you what Lena and I have been talking about. I don't know if Lena, are you on? I am. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Um, as Julia mentioned, um, staff and general counsel have been discussing uh, a proposal. We have a, a few options that we are uh, now discussing for um, returning back to in-person meetings. And uh, we do need to introduce it at some point for the board's uh, evaluation and decision on whether to continue meetings uh, at the administrative office at Hart or at an alternative location. Staff identified uh, City of Tampa Convention Center as an alternative location where we could um, hold our board meetings for um, a certain period of time. That will involve um, a certain fee for technical support, but um, and when, while uh, at the Hearts um, Administrative Office location, um, everything that we have is uh, for free. Uh, but um, on the other hand, you know, there are other um, um, factors uh, to take into account. I can share those options with the whole board of directors um, uh, if um, that's the pleasure of the board. So the reason I bring it up is that's literally two and a half weeks away. So um, if we were to have a hybrid meeting, where it's part of it's in person and we were able to do virtual with our, our candidates and, and a few of our board members, that might, that might serve the goal. I just wondered if that was something that would also be accommodated given that we would have in-person meetings. So just I'll stop there, but that was why I was asking. Yes, Commissioner, at the same time, simultaneously to this proposal being developed by staff and general counsel, general counsel also proposing change to the hard board policy as directed by the hard board of directors at their last uh, meeting to uh, change the policy for telephonic participation. But that to change that policy, we need to have two hearings. And unfortunately, um, just time-wise, um, the timing for the second uh, and final reading uh, to adopt that policy for um, telephonic participation or somewhat hybrid version, as Commissioner Overman mentioned, will happen on the, at the November 2nd board meeting. So we, yes. In. In, this is Julia Mandel. Well, we, you did at your last meeting, because we didn't think that the governor was going to extend it, and that certainly did happen at the last meeting. You did vote uh, pursuant to your rules as they exist right now to, given the exigent circumstances, waive the two meeting uh, uh, maximum for telephonic participation. Um, so we'll, uh, I'll talk with Lena about that more. We can proceed forward given that action that you've previously taken with also coming forward with a, a policy change or actually changing it from telephonic participation to CMT to bring it more in line with what we're actually doing and creating that opportunity for the hybrid meeting similar to what I know the Board of County Commissioners is doing at this point. So um, just to, to, to finalize this, I, we're creating the plan. I think legally we can get there. It's just going to be a question of making some decisions as to whether or not we want to host those at the Hart Administrative Office or whether or not the, the board thinks it would be more prudent to host those and, and you know, pay some additional um, amount of money to utilize the convention center as well. And that's something I think we do need to have a conversation about, given the, the fact that the, the Hart Administrative Office is a little bit of a smaller venue than some of the other venues. Okay, so before before we before I let everybody go, um, I, I it's my understanding that um, uh, the action that we took will allow board members to um, participate virtually for more than the previous rules um, two times a year because we are defining the pandemic as exigent circumstances or an emergency. So. So anyone who wants to or needs to can participate virtually um, at our next uh, few meetings. The question is where we're going to meet. And uh, Lena, do you need uh, a board motion authorizing uh, the, the spending of the money to um, rent 
um, the convention center to make sure that that you have that, or can is that can that be accommodated in? Uh, administratively it could be accommodated we do have budgets uh, allotted for certain uh, expenses associ associated with the board uh, but it would be um, nice to get a consensus from the board um, in this aspect I, to see yeah thank you I'll, 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 I'll this is mechanic I'll make a motion that we uh, conduct the uh, the next couple of meetings for certain at the uh, convention center uh, and I would just add I attended two city council meetings at the convention center and there's ample room and they do a nice job of disinfecting and keep, keep keeping people separate so that's one of the few places I felt safe going to publicly um, and I would also want to point out uh, Julia correct me if I'm wrong but we, we do need to have a quorum after the governor's executive order expires November 1st. We will need a quorum, and I I would certainly volunteer if we could rotate the quorum, but I would certainly be willing to be one of the people to go to the convention center and, and have a in person be there for the meeting, you know. And, and yes, uh, I did want to point out that. Uh, and uh, Dr. McCann is correct. Uh, once we get past the governor's order in uh, at the end of October, which we're being told is not going to be extended, and so I'm going to continue to be the naysayer to say it's not going to be extended, and maybe I'll be proven to be incorrect as I was the last time. But you do have to have under uh, the Sunshine Law a physical quorum in place. So if you do not intend to uh, attend the meeting in person, you will need to let Lena and Danielle know with plenty of time so that they can make sure to have that physical quorum present. If you don't have a physical quorum present, you can still hold a meeting. You just cannot hold one upon which you take any action. So it would be really more in the nature of a workshop. This is Gil Schuss, so I'd like to second that motion for discussion purpose. And my discussion, or my question is, um, it, it's academic, but what, what is the cost for this, given the current circumstances? I mean, it, a lot's being, it sounds like a lot's being made about it. How much is it going to cost to, for us to do this at the convention center? So technical support, yes, we were quoted, we received a quote from the Tampa Convention Center. They are um, um, allowing us to use their facilities for free. Thank you very much, Convention Center. And the technical support will cost approximately 1300 per meeting. Okay, that's not bad. But, and likewise, I would volunteer to be a permanent, uh, a permanent physical quorum member. Great. Well, um, we'll we'll let Danielle work with uh, work with everybody, and and uh, as um, requested, be sure to let Danielle know one way or the other um, how you uh, are going to attend, and um, uh, we'll go from there. But it sounds like it sounds like we've got uh, enough for direction, right, Lena? Correct, yeah. We will probably conduct a short poll uh, or reach out to each board member individually. Thank you very much. Oh, um, we've got a motion on the floor. We'll go ahead and vote on that to use the convention center for the next um, few meetings. Good afternoon. This is Danielle. Please say yes or no after your name is called. Director Castor? Director Hardin? Yes. Director Hudson? Yes. Director Kemp? Yes. Director Knight? Director McLean? Yes. Director Mechanic? Yes. Director Overman? Yes. Director Schistler? Yes. Chair Smith? Yes. Director Vieira? Yes. Director Williams? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Director Williams, have you had your hand up? Um, I do. Thank you, um, Madam Chair, woman. I wanted to ask, first of all, congratulations to Ruthie Reyes uh, for taking the interim position. 
Um, I think just ecstatic and, you know, appreciate her leadership and her response. Uh, but I wanted to make sure, are there any other actions we have to take as a board as a result of of uh, Ruthie being the C interim CEO at this time? That's a great question, and I went over that with uh, uh, general counsel earlier, um, and I was told that they can um, handle, um, you know, the onboarding and, and anything else uh, that may come back to the board uh, November 2nd in terms of uh, any salary adjustments or anything. Um, Ms. Hunley, did you want to add anything uh, to that? Um, no, nope. I can work with general counsel and um, Ruthie to make sure that she's taken care of. We'll provide um, whatever's required at the next meeting or prior. Thank you. Great. Yeah, good Good question. It'll be handled after this meeting, and if anything needs to be brought back to us, they can do that on the second. Um, um, Mr. Overman, you're it. recognized. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And actually, that was going to be my, my question. One, congratulations again to um, Ms. Ruthie Reyes. I, I always mess up your last name. I'm so sorry. Burkhard. <laughs> um, but I really, I really am excited about you taking this role for us uh, and holding, holding the ship together. So thank you very much for, for agreeing to do this. And I've had some questions about the process and the timeline for making sure that uh, that her needs were cared for since she stand, stood up to help us uh, and the whole organization as well as transit riders all across Hillsborough County. Um, I also wanted to, um, a bit of, I guess it's old news but new news, uh, wish Danielle Arthur congratulations on her recent wedding. Uh, she got, uh, and uh, just I'm telling on you, sorry, I heard. <laughs> um, but congratulations. And then um, it sounds like we've, we've really addressed what my concerns were as far as the meetings are concerned. Are the committee meetings on the same schedule so, or the same plan? Because we do have committee meetings scheduled for the 9th, I believe. Um, no, wait a minute. The 16th, I think it is, of November. Uh, there's three typically standing committee meetings during that time period, so I was curious if the process you've gone through for board meetings will be the same. So they will need to have a quorum as well, um, and and I'm thinking that uh, staff will be able to work with the committee members ahead of each meeting about that. Um, but, Alina, did you have anything you wanted to say uh, about the committee meetings at this point? Yes, Madam Chair. So committee uh, membership is uh, quite smaller than the board, and the quorum, of course, constitutes three to four members that we can comfortably and safely accommodate uh, at the administrative office at eboard. That would be staff recommendation. That's, that's what I would confirm. Thank you very much. Great. And so everybody's clear. I'm sorry, this is Julia Mandel. I hate, I'm sorry to interrupt. That that the executive order doesn't end until October 31st or 30th at you know, midnight or something like that. So uh, the next set of meetings that we have for October we'll have in this format, and then we'll go ahead and, and that gives staff time to prepare for both uh, the use of the community center as well as the use of the administrative offices. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I think I had Director Mechanic. Oh, you're recognized. Yes, thank you. Um, if we're if we're asking Ruthie to start the job immediately, I, it strikes me that we should, at a minimum, agree on a salary, which I would suggest would be the same salary level that Carolyn Stewart was being paid under her agreement, not the additional proposal, but her her immediate past agreement as C as interim CEO and I'll make a motion to that effect. I'll second that. Okay. Um Ms. Hunley, um would you like to speak to uh whether you would prefer to have some negotiations of salary before we vote on that? Um, no, I don't think that's necessary. 
Okay. All right. Um, so the motion is, I'm sorry, Director Mechanic, the motion was? Um, to, to, to um, if she's starting work immediately as I CEO, I, I would right? just offer the motion that she be paid the same salary as Carolyn Stewart was making prior to her resignation. All right. And um, Ms. Burkhardt is indicating she'd like to speak to this. Um, just thank you um, to the board and um, to Director Williams and Commissioner Overman and certainly to the entire board uh, again. Um, I certainly ac accept that offer um, without any negotiation and certainly appreciate the consideration on that. All right. Thank you very much. Um, uh, we've got a motion on the floor by Director Mechanic, second by uh, Commissioner Overman. Uh, for the um, to implement a salary for the ICEO effective immediately. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's take a vote. Good afternoon. This is Danielle. Please say yes or no after your name is called. Director Castor? Director Hardin? Yes. Director Hudson? Yes. Director Kemp? Director Kemp? Yes. Oh, thank you. Director Knight? Director McLean? Yes. Director Mechanic? Yes. Director Overman? Yes. Director Schistler? Yes. Chair Smith? Yes. Director Vieira? Director Vieira and Director Williams. Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. What a unanimous board we have today. Um, so I think that has taken us through um, a lot of good work today, some big, uh, some big action and um, great results, um, old business and new business. Does anybody have one last thing they need to say before we adjourn? Old business, new business. I will say uh, thank you very much to all of you for doing your homework and for digging into um, the 153 pages and reviewing that so carefully. Reaching out to Ms. Stevens. Thank you, Ms. Stevens, for making yourself available to us at um, all hours uh, uh, and um, uh, very um, being so accessible and helpful. And um, I think you can see that we're all very pleased with with your work and where we've ended up. And um, I will thank our procurement department for finding you while I'm thanking <laughs> everyone. And, and that process has all worked out very well. Um, so, so thanks to everyone for, for all the good work. And I'll just, uh, say thank you, too, if I may, Madam Chair, and, and uh, to, to thank you for letting us uh, be a part of this process and help facilitate this process for you. We, have, uh, we appreciate the opportunity to do so and look forward to the next steps. We have a little more work to do, and this part might be the hard part, but uh, you can see we're ready to dig in and, and, and feeling optimistic about where this, where this will lead. So with that, I'll just wish everybody uh, a good evening. Stay safe here. Wear your masks, and uh, see you soon. Thank you. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for using WebEx. Visit our website.